I'm Mike, and today, finally, a video on DHA after many requests. I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't super motivated to do an entire video on DHA until I realized how much misinformation there is out there. Just the other day on Joe Rogan's show, Chris Kresser, paleo doctor and organ meat enthusiast, said some astoundingly untruthful things about vegans and DHA. So you have to be chugging tablespoons of flax oil. I think you'd have to take six to nine caps, uh, capsules a day of the average algae supplement. Before I get into refuting his claims, let's look at the basics of DHA. DHA, or docosahexaenoic acid, is a long chain omega-3 that is very important for brain development and eye development of children, as well as brain maintenance and many other things for adults. In terms of dietary intake, you can get enough from fish quite easily. It's also present in algae and other animal products in lower amounts. But the body creates its own DHA by taking a shorter chain omega-3, ALA or alpha linolenic acid, and elongating it or converting it into DHA. Vegans can get plenty of ALA from nuts and seeds like flax seeds, walnuts, and hemp seeds. But we have to ask the question, can humans convert enough ALA into DHA to meet their needs? Which brings me back to the interview with Chris Kresser on Joe Rogan, where he essentially debunks veganism one exaggeration at a time. Only about five to 10% of that gets converted into EPA and even less to DHA, like two to 5%. So you have to be chugging tablespoons of flax oil in order to get as much EPA or DHEA that you would get from eating just a little bit of fish. No, Chris, you're wrong. Let's take a look at the DHA contents of fish. Let's look at this health.gov sheet, averaging out all the salmon, salmon being one of the highest DHA content fish. An FDA serving size will give you about 450 milligrams of DHA. Looking at tuna, averaging all those out, a three ounce serving is only about 200 milligrams. So we're looking at a range of around 300 milligrams. Okay, now let's look to the flax oil. He cited a two to 5% conversion rate of ALA to DHA. So we'll average that out to about three and a half, even though it's often cited as closer to four. But just one tablespoon of flax oil contains eight grams of ALA, which should be converted to about 300 milligrams of DHA, right in there with the average serving of fish. So that statement was absolutely not true. You do not need to be chugging flax oil here. And you don't need to go the oil route at all. Three ounces of walnuts will give you just as much ALA as that tablespoon of flax oil. It gets worse when Joe Rogan asks him about supplementing vegan DHA. Graham, if they do that take microalgae, is that sufficient or how much different difference is that than eating fish? I think you'd have to take six to nine caps, uh, capsules a day of the average algae supplement in order to meet your DHA That's needs. not bad. You that know. can be done. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but it appears that Joe Rogan either just pushes or fully sells supplements. And I think he's kind of seeing an opportunity here. When he says 69 pills a day, Joe Rogan's like, yeah, that's totally doable. Well, I looked around at these allegedly super low DHA levels in algae capsules, but first, the requirement from the WHO, it is about 150 to 300 milligrams per day. So I took the first three that appeared on Google to me, the first one, which happens to be laying around my house, 270 milligrams of DHA. The next one, 304 milligrams, and this one, which is the lowest, 130 milligrams of DHA. So we're looking at one, Maybe, maybe two pills. Seriously, six to nine pills? Where do you get these numbers? To really show how hypocritical this idea is on his site where he recommends fish oil even after addressing the toxic nature of it, he says to specifically look for fish oil pills that have 200 or more milligrams of DHA. So he throws up the straw man issue of not having enough DHA in the algae pills when it's actually really a concern for fish oil pills. And he sort of goes on to spin fish as superior because... Because fish have a lot of other nutrients aside from EPA and DHA. They have so protein, they have selenium, right. um, they have a lot of other bioavailable nutrients. But Yeah, you gotta get those extras like PCBs and mercury and dioxin, all even in wild caught fish from the ocean due to worldwide ambient industrial toxins. The most ironic part of this, they are now feeding tilapia flaxseed in order to get the DHA levels higher. Okay, that's enough about Chris Kresser's DHA myths. Now to the important questions, do vegans even have DHA deficiencies? There have been multiple studies showing that vegans have lower DHA levels than fish eaters, 
but as this one said, there is no evidence of adverse effects on health or cognitive function with lower DHA intake. And as this 2014 study mentions, vegan DHA levels are the same as non-fish eating omnivores. So these are not uniquely vegan levels, and sometimes it's even the opposite from this study when looking at some fish eaters, some non-fish eating omnivores, some vegetarians, and vegans, they found, get this, vegan women had higher blood DHA levels than any other group, than the fish eaters, than anyone. Interestingly, they concluded that the vegans might just have an increased ability to convert ALA to DHA. This makes sense. If you are not feeding yourself DHA externally and you have the ability to make more, you can just make more. From this study, non-fish eaters, whether they are vegetarian or meat eaters, convert nearly 25% more DHA from ALA. Just be sure not to eat too much omega-6 because that can affect the conversion, which is one more reason to stay away from vegetable oils because you can essentially mega dose omega-6 with vegetable oil. So if you are vegan, should you be supplementing with algae-based DHA? There are some plant-based doctors that don't seem to be pushing the point, but there are a lot of plant-based doctors that are pushing the point, whether it's just as an insurance policy or like Dr. Greger, who absolutely says you should take it during pregnancy, for example. And Jack Norris had a good proposal of taking it once every two or three days, which can be more economical. And as this study shows, a few regular supplements of algae will raise a vegan's DHA blood level, so you know it works. So looking at all the evidence, there doesn't really seem to be a compelling argument that vegan health is negatively affected by not having a dietary intake of DHA, which begs the question, could it be that vegan DHA levels are just how much a person's body needs and people who eat fish happen to just have a larger store, much like how people store extra fat. Either way, make sure you get those omega-3 precursors in walnuts and flax seeds and hemp seeds, and you have really nothing to lose by supplementing, except if you mega dose, there's a possibility that there could be increased bleeding or bruising as some people have warned. And no, supplementing with algae should not be deemed a flaw in the vegan diet, especially by somebody who promotes fish oil. As for Chris Kresser's interview on Joe Rogan, I could dedicate an entire episode to all of the fallacies that they go over in that video, but just for fun, one quick one that was extra weak. Yeah, but even there, you know, as we talked about, you're going to contribute. You're going to suffer. contribute to suffering yeah. and p potentially more if you're looking on the scale of individual lives. You have to start evaluating, like, is a cow more sentient or worth, you know, the life of a cow worth more than the life of a rabbit or a vole or the kind of animals that are being killed in, in the, in, you know, in the production of these plant foods? Um, it's, it's a real question. Eating vegan is just choosing to kill rabbits and other small animals instead of cows, pigs, and chickens. Like it's equal. This is crazy. I even just made this chart on plantspace.org out of data from animalvisuals.com showing how many animals die per million calories of various food, including harvesting deaths. It's not even close. And while I'm on the subject, and I know some of you are wondering, yes, plant space is in the making. I'm currently illustrating some of the most important studies like this one by Caldwell Esselstein, so they're more easily understood with graphics. And I'm also building the Diet Lab, which I mentioned earlier, which already includes this caloric needs calculator that I made and will also have a downloadable food journal which detects a correlation between feeling bad and eating bad. Then, of course, there is the forum, which needs to be beautified a little bit. But at this point, the whole thing is still open to suggestions, so feel free to let me know if there's anything I should add or anything that looks wonky. All right, that's it for today. Definitely go and get your omegas, and thank you for watching.